All right, cool. So here's the plan. Hopefully this sounds all right. I'm gonna, uh, I've got the, still got the Mesa or my Mesa, um, the Rectiverb 25 connected and it's through the aux box. And um, I'm not doing any, like the reason I have headphones on right now is it's completely silent in the room, um, except for the, the buzz of the strings, like through the mic, which is, took way too long to troubleshoot. Um, yeah, so I figured I'd just maybe to give you a real idea of like the sound of the guitar, um, the sound of the amp, the sound of the aux box. Um, and then, you know, once do a little bit today, um, walk through some of the pedals and then um, I'll swap it out <clears throat> next time for this train wreck clone I have. And we'll see if there's that much of a difference between a wrecked over 25 and a train wreck. I think uh, you can probably guess there. And then uh, I also have this phase um, copy, or it's a um, half of it is a, the, the high channel is a, a sort of comet, um, like a, you know, probably a 15. And then the, um, the second channel is, a, is, or the first channel, the clean channel, the low channel is a, uh, it's a Fender old 5AB whatever element OP circuit. Um, yeah, and so if I leave everything else the same, hopefully... You know, the videos will show differences and, and whatnot. So um, I'll just go through and find something that sounds good on the aux box. And then, uh, yeah, maybe play a little bit. Pedals, um, I'll sort of call them out as I press on them if I do. And then, uh, yeah, do this again later. All right, so let's take a look. Um, you know, go super small and super screechy. To begin with, you can get really get an idea of like what's. Um, I'm gonna take the speaker drive down a little bit because sometimes it's a little bit too much. I still hear it. So uh, right now I'm in um, the humbucker is in series, so it's like super loud. Let me back it off a little bit, take the volume down a little bit. I'll put it in humbuckers and on the neck, which is like where I play 99% of the time. So yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a great sounding position. It's a little tiny amp. I think the modeling is, is making it even seem a little bit smaller than it is. Um, so let's, um, let's find something a little bit bigger. Um, there's some pretty cool stuff in here. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like the, the, um, the choruses. So like, like totally like 1980s. <laughs> I mean, it's like, oh, geez. It's like, uh, you, it almost makes you play our straights. Too much reverb. Um, oh yeah, yeah, and none of these are modified presets. So you get to hear what the presets sound like with a pretty good guitar and a, a pretty good amp and a bunch of good pedals. Um, this is another Avia Korst Twins. Um, it's, if I close it, you can see how they give them silly names. Um, uh, we got, yeah, so we got two 414s on one cone. Um, and then, you know, it's set to 100 watts, low speaker drive. I think that's just from where I just dulled it down. I don't know if that changes preset to preset. And um, delay is, uh, yeah, precision delay. It's set up. There's no modulation or anything, really. It's just straight echo. And then uh, there's some plate reverb on there as well, so you can, like, turn it down if it's too much, like, which I think it is. Um, so I usually take the mix down just a little bit. Yeah. Pretty good clean. 
you can pop up. Um, I feel like that's a really good, really good start. Um, so just run through a couple of the guitar sounds. So as I'm flipping around, of course, this is if anybody ever watches this. Um, sort of, uh, I'll start in the neck. I'll work in the middle uh, with the humbuckers and the humbuckers in series, and then I'll play um, single coil tones, and then sort of just futz around. And hopefully, I remember to talk and and say what's what's up. All right. So here goes. Should have done that one for the chorus lines. Sounds very, very 80s. Well, the tune. Or the J chorus one, sorry. Um, all right. Yeah, but that's not perfect for this. Let's um, move on. This one's really nice, just super reverby. <laughs> clean cabinet and they got everything set. I mean, I can dart it up, but that's really overdrive. Pretty good. All right, so I'll just, I'll start there. I'm going to take the reverb down just a little bit though. Um, again, I lied about leaving these unmodified. I'll just have to remember to do this next time. Now the delay sounds louder, go figure. Um, let's take the mix down. Five percent. Cool. series it's just louder the cool thing about that too is that like it's different than say I mean as great as the boss katana is like that like bite on the initial attack and then the, it like decays to clean um, like I haven't been able to find a, a setup other than what I've got going now that um, I don't have to play it like extremely ridiculously high volume and even then I'm not really good at controlling that and it's not very comfortable so barely do it anyway but now I can kind of get the the humbuckers on this guitar how the the, the rectover breaks up on the clean channel it's really nice with the strat 
That's interesting. And it was pretty good with the Les Paul too, which is strange because I feel like my Les Paul and, and the Languedoc have like very, they're not exactly the same, but the pickups and the sort of feel to the dynamics is, is very close. Um, yeah. I could dial the volume back and get it clean again, of course. Take it out of series. It's almost totally clean now. I'll add the tone way back too. kids um might just get cut the delay here for a sec though because it's a little distracting so what gets interesting is that's clean switch over to the um single chorus for a second just so Strangely enough, or actually not probably very strange, is that the single coils, like via the tap in this guitar, um, it's not anything like the single coils I have in that Strat. Um, you know, totally different guitars, so can't, I don't know, just can't play Steve Ray in this one. Um, yeah, so, um, probably should get moving on playing and, and recording, because my own uh, sort of attention span is, is waning. Um, okay, so there's that. And then uh, just uh, some of the overdrives. Here's the, the KTR. A little more volume. You can hear it doesn't really open up until it hits a certain dB gain or whatever. Just like touching the volume so that you can hopefully hear it. Oh. Yeah, it's better with the humbucker. favorite um pedal of this guitar anyway um i definitely like the the tube screamers better clearly biased <laughs> it's like peanut butter and jelly Thank you. 
John Mayer and Chris Book and everybody else who's done that song justice and then I copied them terribly. Alright, so that's the um, single tube scream and then of course you got another one on top. <laughs> Ridiculous up top. Like. I don't know. There's no no sound in the room at all. Thank goodness. My wife and kids would be very angry. I gotta admit, it does sound a little buzzy. something I could do with the EQ to tune it down or I could take them trouble out of the presence or something but anyways go back to sort of normal and try the two wow it's angry out the compressor quick. Mm, nice. Mm. Really nice. See so that first tube screamer in front of it. from the Oxbox on before, but here's the Echo Zor. Compressor off. Get a little of that juice left and close out with the pro vibe. Get, that. get off that. Probably. 
Jesus here anyway. <laughs>